power of forgiveness. You know, many of us know that uh, without, without forgiveness, there wouldn't be the cross, right? The cross is the reason, forgiveness is the reason the cross was even there. For us to even have an encounter with Jesus, we had to have forgiveness in our lives. So one of the greatest things the cross even brought was forgiveness in our lives. And we know what forgiveness is. It's just the cancellation of a debt. Anybody ever owed something? You go, I don't even know how I'll ever pay that back. And maybe somebody's come and said, I'm just going to pay that for you. Or I'm just going to take care of that bill for you. Or, or maybe you owed somebody something and they just said, don't worry about it. I just, I just want to, don't, don't even worry about it. Forget about it. That's cancellation of a debt. There's no freer thing to me for somebody just to cancel that debt that you owe. And that's what Jesus did with his work on the cross. And this, earlier this week when I was studying, I heard a, a funny story that I'll share with you th- uh, today. It was about a woman, she had a pet bird. Now, I had a pet bird growing up. It was, a, um, it was like a cockatiel, a little yellow-headed bird with the rosy red cheeks. Now, those things are mean. I got bit more times by that bird than I think any, any dog I've ever had. Birds are just mean animals. But this lady had a pet parrot. Now, not only is it bad to have a mean animal, but one that can talk is even worse. So she had this pet parrot and it was really good with, uh, with speaking and it was just the meanest pet on the planet. It would just, it would cuss at her and just degrade her and tell her how awful she was and how, how big of a loser she is. And one day she just got sick and tired of this parrot degrading her, her pet just downgrading her and messing her up. So she grabbed the pet and as she grabs it, it's just pecking her on the arm and she's got scars on her hands where this thing just bites her all the time. And she said, I'm gonna, I'm tired tired of this. I'm going to, we're going to fix this. So she goes in the kitchen and she throws the parrot in the freezer. And the whole time it says for about 10 seconds, the parrot was just letting her have it, telling her how ugly she was and how big of a loser she was. And and then it said after about 10 seconds, it just went silent. And the woman said, well, I surely, surely I didn't kill it. So she starts kind of panicking, thinking she's hurt the bird. So she opens up the freezer door and there's the bird just kind of sitting there shivering in the cold. And the parrot begins, it looks at her and it just begins to apologize. And he said, I'm so sorry. I'll never do that again. I'll never degrade you anymore. Please find it in your heart to forgive me. I am so sorry that I was rude to you and mean to you. It will never happen again. Could you please forgive me? And kind of shocked and kind of distraught, the woman said, well, okay, apology accepted. I I forgive you. And and the bird, you know, have you ever been real nervous and you just get like a knot in your throat? The bird just took a big gulp, just a kind of like that. And and he said, well, can can I just ask you a question? And she said, yeah. She said, go ahead. And he said, um, uh, what'd the chicken do? <laughs> so this chicken was just, and that, you know what? That's how life is with us. You know, we never expect, we never expect forgiveness for people. We always expect the worst. Have you ever just had a friend maybe that's just done something against you or somebody has wronged you or sinned against you and that person just kind of disappears? Has anybody ever experienced that in your, in your life or in your family? They just kind of fall off the planet and they don't ever, nobody expects forgiveness in their life. We always expect the worst. We never expect somebody to show us grace and to show us mercy. And that's just human nature. That's just who we are. We're, never, we're not born knowing how to do good. We're not born knowing how to love people. We're always, as a matter of fact, we're born knowing how to do bad. We have to teach uh, our children to do, to do good. My daughter... Uh, in eight league is just mean. <laughs> She's, she knows how to do wrong things. She knows how to, she got in trouble this morning for telling a lie. She knows how to lie really well. She's two, guys. She's two and she knows how to lie with the best of them. So we don't know, we don't have to be taught how to do those things because we just are. And it's just natural for us to not want forgiveness in our life or not, not, uh, not expect forgiveness in our life. And this morning, I want to talk to you about the power of forgiveness, because just like that parrot who didn't expect it, who expected the worst, he got quiet in a hurry. But we, all, we do that in our same lives. We expect the worst when we do people wrong or when something's uh, against us, or even with God. Sometimes we just can't understand how he could forgive us of something, some of the things that we've done in our life or the stuff that's been uh, in, in situations we've been in. But I just want you to know this morning that God loves you and he cares for you. And forgiveness, man, is the power of the cross that Pastor Brandon spoke of last week. So I just want to pray this morning and I just want us to dive in just to three points that I've thought about over this week as I was thinking about forgiveness. So let's just pray together. God, I love you. God, thank you for your word. Thank you that, God, it just brings life and mercy and grace and forgiveness into our lives. God, we know that there's debt so big in our lives that we could never pay it back. And because of the work you did on the cross, Jesus, you bought that opportunity, you bought that right to forgive us of our debts. 
And God, today, I just pray you open our hearts and you open our minds. Father, there are people in here that walked in with bitterness in their hearts, that walked in with unforgiveness in their hearts toward family members and toward friends. Maybe they've walked in thinking they'll never be forgiven of some of the things that's happened in their life and the enemy just keeps bringing those things to their mind. And God, I just pray over the course of the next few minutes that you just wrap them in your love and honor and God, just your power of your Holy Spirit begins to speak to their heart and let us understand what the power of forgiveness is in our lives. God, we'll give you praise for everything you do in us in Jesus name amen so the first thing I really thought about when I was thinking about forgiveness is that forgiveness is eternal forgiveness is eternal it's everlasting it never ends I remember the first time that I made my wife cry she wasn't necessarily my wife at the time we had only been dating I think about six months so I was 15 and she was 16 she's a little bit older I got an older woman but she's she's a little bit older than me and she came to visit me at my house because I couldn't drive I didn't have a car I was 15 years old so if we were going to visit it had to come see me so I kind of wish that's how it was sometimes even now (laughs) just come see me all the time but she came to see me and we were goofing off at my house and my mom was I don't even remember why we were goofing off but something had happened and we had started kind of roughhousing with my mom and I got the bright idea now many of you that know me know that on the spur of the moment I don't always come up with the best ideas I tend to sometimes lean towards stupid more than smart when it's just kind of spur of the moment ideas okay Uh, every now and then I'll hit a gym and it'll be good but for the most part I mean I'm like you know batting a hundred out of a you know it's not good sometimes but I got the bright idea that I'm gonna use at the time I wouldn't even know if I could have considered her my girlfriend, this girl that I'm interested in. uh, I was going to use her as a weapon against my mom. So I pick my wife up and I proceed to swing her like a baseball bat. Guys, I missed my mom, but I centered the corner of a wall in our house. And for about five seconds, I knocked my wife, not my wife, but I knocked my girlfriend out cold. She was limp. She went limp in my arms and fell on the ground. And the first thing I thought is, oh my God, I've killed this girl. She's dead. So she, I'm thinking, uh, you know, you're kind of panicking and you got, you know, there's witnesses. You can't, you know, there's nothing you can do. You're in trouble. Uh, But she wakes up. She wakes up after about five seconds and just starts bawling. And guys, talking about forgiveness, this is the unforgivable sin. There is never, I don't think I'll ever live that sin down. To this day, if I pick my daughter up, if I'm just picking her up, going to give her a hug, I'm reminded of that day. I don't, if I can, there's no swirling my daughter around in my house because I'm reminded of the wall that she may hit. Or if, God forbid, I ever choose to pick my wife up again and no, none of that. I'm always, reminded, I'm always reminded of the time that I smashed her head into the side of the wall and, and never, ever will I live that down. But thank God. Thank God that with God, forgiveness is eternal. It's completely forgettable. And there's a passage of scripture I want to read. It's just my favorite. This is probably one of my favorite passages. And I just want to read the whole little passage in Psalm 103. It's 12 verses, but I want to read it with you because it talks about how the forgetfulness of God and what he does with us because of his love. And it says uh, in verse one, it says, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. And then he begins to list them. He says, number one, who forgives all of your sins. Everybody say all. That's all. There is no other. It's everything. He forgives every one of them. There's nothing we could do that he wouldn't forgive. And heals all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Listen, I love this. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Is that not incredible? He does not treat us. He doesn't give us what we deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. And it says this, it says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the is his love for those who fear him and as far as the east is from the west so far has he removed our transgressions from us it says as a father has compassion on his children so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him what an amazing unbelievably powerful scripture in our lives that we can hold on to this promise that literally when we give him our lives when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ he throws our transgressions our sins our faults our failures as far as the east is from the west and many of you know the the equator it never ends east and west never there's not an ending point it's continuous and what God is saying there is when you come to me 
I will forgive you forever. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah, and uh, it says, in Jeremiah, it says, he says, though your sins be as scarlet, let's reason together. They will be white as snow. He tells us in scripture over and over and over again, his promises are true. That when you trust in God, there's nothing you could have ever done in your life that he would not forgive you of. There's debts in our lives that we could not repay, but because of the work done on the cross, it brings forgiveness in our lives. And Jesus said, where nobody else would forgive you, I I will forgive you. God, real forgiveness is eternal. True forgiveness is everlasting. He's not gonna bring those things up again. And many of you are like me. We, we struggle with that idea, with that, that ideology, with that, uh, with that philosophy because we can't always seem to forget the things we're supposed to have forgiven. Like you ever said, well, I forgive you, but I don't think I can ever forget that. You ever said that? I don't think I can ever let that go. And a lot of times you'll say, well, I forgive you. It's forgiven. But as soon as another conflict comes up or as soon as something else happens, you're right back to that thing that you said you had forgiven maybe weeks before or even possibly years before. Some of us are harboring bitterness in our hearts over people that have maybe harmed us or hurt us even years ago. Uh, And and we don't understand what it is to truly 100% forgive like God. But listen, Here's what's so incredible about about God's word and about his forgiveness and about his grace. The second thing I thought about is that forgiveness is for everyone. Forgiveness is for everyone. Sometimes we don't think we can forgive those people. Sometimes we don't think we can do anything. Uh, We can not just forget the things that they've done against us. And that might be a possibility, but we have to understand that true forgiveness, God-sized forgiveness is for every single one. There's a story in John chapter eight that's probably my favorite uh, story in, in the book of John. And it talks about a a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And we'll just pick up, it's 12 verses again, but we'll just pick up in verse two. And it says, at dawn, he he appeared in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him. He sat down to teach them. Guys, this city was packed in the temple. I mean, it was packed. There was no, there was standing room only kind of in this area. And it says, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery and they made her stand before the group. Now get this picture in your mind. This lady was caught in the act of adultery and they brought her in after being caught in the act, drug her out of the home and made her stand in front of hundreds, possibly thousands of people naked and ashamed, completely exposed. And he said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. He said, now what do you say? And they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And I love this verse because it doesn't tell us what he was writing. So I like to use my imagination. And part of me, there's just something inside that tells me that maybe he was writing, he bent down to write and he possibly maybe just started writing people's names in the sand. And maybe he started writing some of the stuff that they had done in their lives. Maybe he was just reading their mail as they stood there, as he wrote in the sand, because it says they kept pushing him. And it says when they kept on questioning him, he stood up, he straightened up and he said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her and part of me in my mind the way my imagination works is possibly they were so frustrated with telling him what he should be doing giving them an answer that they possibly didn't even pay attention to what he had written in the sand and maybe when he stood up was the first time they looked down and saw what he had written and it's a possibility that it could they may have just seen some of the stuff that they had done in their life that surely nobody would have ever known nobody would have ever known I'd sinned like that nobody would have ever known I had done that I hadn't told anybody but maybe Jesus was reading their mail because again it says again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to walk away one at a time, the older one first until Jesus, till only Jesus was left. So they were walking away in order. So maybe Jesus was just writing down, he was listing them, writing down their stuff, writing down what's going on. And now all of a sudden they began to realize, oh no, he's reading our mail, something's going on. But they walked away and the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her. He said, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no, sir, neither have I condemned you, Jesus declared. Go and leave your life of sin. So we see here in this passage, the only person that had the opportunity, that had the right, that even would even have the justification to stone her or to accuse her or to condemn her, loved her instead. Because forgiveness is for everyone. Jesus may, who knows what he wrote, Jesus may have wrote all those things in the sand, but even at that moment, he wasn't condemning them. He was letting them know that apart from him, apart from Jesus, apart from forgiveness, there's no one that can be justified in a life on this earth. It's only through this forgiveness and the grace and the mercy of Jesus. It's all about 
him. We can never forget that forgiveness is for everyone. Maybe you've got somebody in your life that you said, I just can't forgive them. I'll never forgive them for what they've done. There's, some, there's been atrocities done in this earth and, done in, and maybe even in this room, maybe, maybe there was molestation as a child or maybe you were abused as a child or maybe it's in a, you're in an abusive relationship now or maybe there's stuff going on in your life that you just couldn't figure out how could I possibly forgive them for what they've done. But you've got to understand that forgiveness isn't just for you. It's not just for me and the things that I've done. It's for the people that have harmed me, the people that have hurt me. It's for every single buddy on this earth. It's forgiveness is for everyone. The Bible's clear. It says for whosoever, it's whosoever will. The Bible says that God loved the world, that whoever would come and accept him would have eternity with him. We can't place forgiveness just where we want it. It's got to be for everyone. And then the third thing that I thought about when I was thinking about forgiveness is that forgiveness is essential. Forgiveness is essential for us to have a real encounter with God, for us to have a real encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Many of us have possibly come here the past two weeks and you've seen people worshiping like maybe they haven't, you haven't seen them before and, and participating in prayer and, and uh, participating in the elements that we've had available and you see people interacting and encountering God, but maybe you've come and you said, but I don't think I can. I see what they're doing, but maybe I don't, I don't feel it. I'm not feeling it. I don't, I don't feel what they feel or see what they see. I don't get this thing that they're calling an encounter. But you gotta understand that forgiveness is essential for a real encounter with God. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter six. It's the Lord's prayer. They come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, teacher, teach us how to pray. And he says this in uh, six verse nine. He says, then, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then what does he decide to do? He says, he goes on and he, he, he begins to explain what he just said. But only he explained the important part. You see, in the law, people were taught eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. In the law, all of these people knew uh, justification through retaliation. They understood that if somebody hits you, you could, you're justified in hitting them back. If somebody harmed you, you were justified in harming them back. If there was a murder, you were justified in killing that person because eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But Jesus brought a new covenant to the earth and he brought something new that he was teaching people and he wanted them to understand the power of what he was saying. So in verse 14, he reiterates this little bitty phrase in the prayer. He says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. And then here's the powerful part. He says, but if you do not forgive others of their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. And what's he saying is through Jesus, through the power of the cross, Jesus does a work inside of you. He doesn't just change your attitude or your personality. He doesn't just change your sin nature. He changes you. Maybe where you couldn't forgive somebody before, now all of a sudden you can find it in your heart to forgive them. Now listen to what he says. Forgive us as we are forgiving. So it's a continuation. It's this understanding that God, I understand your grace and I understand your mercy, that if you're, if, if you're forgiving me, I am forgiving those around me. It's essential. Jesus tells of a time, he says that if you find yourself at the altar uh, offering a sacrifice or bringing worship to the Lord and you realize at that moment, that you have an alt or you have an offense with your brother or a friend or, or, or somebody that you have a relationship with, that you need to leave your gift at the altar because it's this important. It's more important than worshiping God at this moment. It's more important than coming and bringing a gift of worship to even God himself. He said, leave it at the altar, leave it there and go find that person that you are offended with or that's going on, that's hurt you in some way. And he says, you need to make reconciliation with them. And then and only then can you come back and have a real encounter with God a God-sized encounter in your life. Maybe you're here this morning and you just have that in your mind or in your heart. Maybe as I'm speaking, you're reminded of the offenses that's happened in your life, the things that people have done against you. Or maybe it's just one person that's harmed you or has done something uh, against you. And you need to know in your heart that you've got to figure out a way to reconcile with those people because real forgiveness is eternal. It's for every single buddy. It's for even those people that have hurt you the worst. Forgiveness is for them and that it's essential. If you want a relationship with 
with God like you've never had before. If you want to be able to come in and have an encounter with God today like you ever have before, you've got to understand, you've got to know that forgiveness is essential. You've got to find forgiveness in your heart. There's a story, one more story I'll tell you. Uh, in scripture in Matthew chapter 18 Jesus is walking on the road with his disciples and Peter Peter's kind of a loud mouth he always kind of spoke up and was trying to be kind of uh, flamboyant with uh, with Jesus so he came up and he uh, goes up to Jesus and he says Jesus how many times should I forgive my brother or sister if they've sinned against me and he said should I do it seven times and see Peter already Peter's trying to impress Jesus because see the law said that you could forgive somebody three times You had to forgive somebody three times. I don't know why they come up with that number, but it was three times. So Peter, in his mind, he was gonna impress Jesus. He was gonna go above and beyond. Anybody like going above and beyond, trying to exceed expectations? Peter was trying to do that. He said, should I do it seven times? So not only, he doubled it and then added one. So he was gonna impress Jesus. And Jesus said, Jesus said, Peter, not, not, not seven times, but 77 times. Not seven times, but 70 times. And what he's saying is, as many times as it takes as many times as it takes. That person in your life that that lies every time you turn around. That relationship that you're in, that husband, that wife that can't seem to ever get it straight, can't seem to ever figure it out. How many times should I forgive them before I just throw my hands in the air and say, enough's enough? How many times? Jesus says, "There's there's, there's no times. There's no times here. There's no number that you set. It's a heart condition. It's it's compassion and it's the love and the mercy of God that he breeds through us, that he gives in us as part of forgiveness. He lives lives outside of us and shows the love of God to everyone else. And he goes on to tell this story. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is like this. And he said, there was a ruler. There was this king who had all of these servants. And And he said, one day he came and all these servants owed him all this stuff and he came to collect debts. And he said, this particular servant had come in and he said, you owe me. And it was almost like 10, let's just give it a modern day number. Let's just say $10 million. It was was a bunch of bags of gold that he owed him. And 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 the servant said, I can't pay you right now. Just give me more time and I'll promise I'll pay you back. And it says that the king got angry and he got upset and that he ordered them to all be sold into slavery so that he could, so that they could repay the debt. And it says that the servant got so distraught and so scared and so upset that he bowed down on his knees and he begged for mercy. Please just give me more time. And it says that at that moment, during that time, that the king felt compassion on this servant and he canceled his debt. He forgave his debt. And he said, you know what? I'm just gonna forgive this. Go and you're you're forgiven. You don't even have to worry about coming and bringing me anything else. And it says, so excited that this servant gets up, jumps up, he's excited that all of this stuff is forgiven and he walks outside of this castle and he happens to see a friend of his, a fellow servant who owed him the equivalent of like 10 bucks. So we're talking $10 million, 10 bucks. $10 million, 10 bucks, okay? He owed him like 100 bags of silver, 100 silver coins, not I mean bags, 100 silver coins. And it says that he did the same thing. He, He says that he stopped him and he said, give me what you owe me, you need to pay me back. And maybe that guy was just thinking about the, uh, the, the hair that he had just slipped by. He just slipped by by the skin of his teeth, right? He saw, man, we almost got sold into slavery. I've got to get things straight. Even though he was forgiven, even though the debt was forgiven, maybe he was worried about what could have just happened, what should have just happened. And he came and in fear, he says, give me everything you owe me. And the guy said, I can't pay you. Give me more time and I'll pay you back. And the Bible says, Jesus said, this man choked him and threw him on the ground and had him thrown into prison until he could pay him back. And it says, when the other servants found out, they told the king about this and the king came back and told him, he said, do you understand what just happened? I had forgiven you of so much. You owed me so much more than you could ever possibly pay back. And then when I forgive you of that debt, you're going and you're you're harboring bitterness in your heart against people who owe you so little. And he said, that's like the kingdom of God. God has forgiven us of so much in our life. So much has he forgiven you of. As high as the heavens are above the earth is how much compassion he shows those who love him. As far as the east is from the west is how far he'll throw our sin and our iniquity, our faults away and over bring them back up again. Today, maybe there's somebody in your life that you need to forgive. Maybe there's atrocities that's happened in your life and things that have gone on in your life that you possibly couldn't understand how to forgive. But let me help you understand this. 
You don't have to. You need to let God work through you and, and, and enter in. Apart from Jesus, we can't forgive. Apart from Jesus, we don't understand that kind of love. But it's Jesus living through us and in us that allows us to live a life that honors God. One person said unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other people to die. You can't live your life in bitterness because it only, it's only going to tear you down. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, I just want to pray with you because I really believe that there are people in this room who just have that problem in their life. It's a, it's a life of bitterness that I'm living in. I wake up and I'm mad. I think about it and I'm angry. And maybe you just need to understand God's forgiveness. Maybe you're here this morning and you don't understand God's forgiveness because you've never accepted him as your savior. You've never been able to experience that kind of love in your own life, much less show it to people around you. The Bible says that God loved you so much that he cared for you so much that he gave his only son to die. It says he died on a cross for you and bore every sin that we would ever commit in our lives on that cross. And he bought the right to forgive us of our sins. And it says that if we'll accept him as our savior, if we'll give him our life and we'll accept him as our savior, then we could spend eternity in a place called heaven with him. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Brandon, that's me. I need to give my life to him. I wanna experience that kind of forgiveness in my own life. The kind of forgiveness that says it's eternal. He'll never bring it back up again. And I'm ready to live a life, start fresh and new on a clean slate. I'm ready to walk out of here and live a life that honors God. Maybe that's you, nobody's looking. I just wanna pray with you this morning. We're not gonna embarrass you. If that's you, just slip your hand up right where you are. I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. I see that hand right back to the right. I see it, thank you. I'm ready to give it, give it all the way to him. Trust him completely. Experience forgiveness like I never understood. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, man, I've given Jesus my heart, but I can be honest that I'm bitter. I'm mad. I'm angry. There's been people that have hurt me, that have lied against me. Maybe, that you, maybe, maybe it's this. Maybe you can't even forgive yourself. Maybe all, you're do, all, all that happens in your everyday life is I'm reminded of the things that I've done in my life and how could I forgive myself of those things? The things that I've put my family through, the things that I've put my wife or my husband through, the things that I've put my parents through, I couldn't begin to forgive myself of those things. I'm always reminded of those. And this morning, that's you and you wanna say, I wanna experience forgiveness. I wanna forgive, I need, to, I need to quit being bitter, it's eating me up inside and I wanna, I wanna set myself free and those around me free. If that's you, just slip your hand up right where you are. We're just gonna pray, I see those hands all over the room, hands going up everywhere. Today, if this is you and you say, this is me, I'm giving my heart to Jesus, I just want you to repeat this after me. You can say it silently where you sit, you can say it out loud, it's the heart condition, it's all about what you say and how serious you are with God. Dear Jesus, thank you for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness. I confess that I have sinned, that I have done wrong, and I have lived my life on my own. And today I give you my life. I surrender my heart to you. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. I live for you from now on in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, for all of these hands that went up in this room today, God, bitter hearts, people that are living in bitterness and it's eating them up inside. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, your power and your compassion and your love floods their hearts right now. God, Holy Spirit, just wrap them in your love and let them experience an encounter with you like never before of true and honest and earnest forgiveness in their lives. We'll give you praise for everything you do in Jesus' name, amen.